So. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got a special flick for you. We're excited about this because we're dusting off the kayaks. We're gonna go hit the water. I've only, I, I think I've taken mine out like once this year, once. And we're just gonna clean them up. Paul has not taken his out yet. It is in fact, very empty. So you're gonna see a very hungry Snorlax over here, a very full Snorlax behind me here. We're gonna give you a, a tour. We're gonna walk through them. So we both have the Hobie Pro Angler, the 360 edition. They're both 14 footers. They big, there you go. And we're gonna rig them up for our preferred method of fishing, which is uh, throw everything at them until they bite. Kitchen sink, junk fishing, whatever. They're basically like tournament rigged and we might, might, dare I say, partake in some tournaments this year. So we're gonna give you the full tour from bow to stern. We're gonna have some fun with it. I think you guys will get some takeaways because there's a lot of like universally applicable things here that you could apply to any kayak that you go out and get. And if you're looking at a Hobie, well, then you can copy paste if you want to or drop us a comment below. Let us know what your kayak rig is for this season as well. Love hearing from you guys. All right, before we get to the walkthrough on these boats, if you guys like the content, and you want to stay tuned for more, consider subscribing to the channel, smash the like on this video, ring that notification bell, so you know we drop more content. And then come hang out with me and this nerd every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We go live on YouTube and Twitch. It's a ton of fun. Love to see you there. Talk to you in chat. All right. 2021 rigs. Let's go. Let's start with mine since it's done. And then we're going we're gonna to do some editing magic, <laughs> mystical editing magic. To we're going to cut. <laughs> don't, don't tell them how it works. Then we're gonna fill Paul's boat up and you're gonna see they're, they're kind of mirror images. Uh, they're gonna look very similar, but we got a few like differences, a few nuances that I think are key and crucial. Let's get to this thing. Let's walk through this thing. We're going bow to stern. So starting up at the front, again, this is the Hobie Pro Angler 360. You can tell because it says 360 on it. So here's our front storage. This thing is absolutely massive. It's absurd how much you can put in here, at least two bodies. So if I open this thing up, it's huge. On the inside, there's tons of extra compartment space just for stuff I don't really use. So sometimes if the season's right, like spring, rain gear could get tucked down here. I've got extra paddles down here that I can pull out if we end up in skinny water. It is a pedal kayak and these fins are pretty long. They're pretty huge. They do kick up, which is cool. So if you run into structure, that's part of what sold me on the Hobie 360 is that these fins just knock up. It's kind of crazy. So it's nice that those will flip up if you like hit a rock or a log. We're going in the river later. So, I mean, that does happen from time to time and it's been known to happen. All right. So inside the cockpit though, kayaking essentials, you guys. Snacks, 100%. And a little towel if you get, if you get wet. Uh, a tow rope. Little bow line, huge, very important. Uh, I believe, yes, I knew that was in there. Uh, a golf ball, I don't know why that's in there. You pick up trash when you're out on the water, do that. Electric tape, that can be extremely helpful for a lot of things like naming your fish finder Lauren. We'll get to Lauren here in a second. Uh, a toolkit, toolkits make a huge difference. This is a lifesaver. Uh, but in here I got some extra wiring stuff, spare parts. Uh, we got Allen wrenches, screwdrivers, zip ties, a wrench, you know, all the things that you might need on the water just so you can keep operating all day long. So this compartment is amazing, holds lots of stuff. You got your rod lockers. There's actually six sleeves in these and they hold up to, I think like an eight, eight and a half foot rod. So I can put my swim bait set up in here, which is sick. And other than that, we always bring six rods with us. Paul and I both do. So I have like one or two spinning setups. The rest are usually bait casters ranging from your medium lights to your heavy rods. So we can do all sorts of things and cover all sorts of different water. There are gear tracks up here. I was using this for my anchor wizard last year. Check this out. The anchor wizard back here is an absolute game changer. So anchor wizard sells like this adapter plate and then Hobie sells this H-Rail universal mount. The H-Rail is also one of the things that sold me on this boat. The H-Rail is amazing. There's so many different pieces of gear that you can attach to this thing and you're gonna see a bunch of them today. But having this anchor right here, it's so close, it's easy to use. It's a simple tension drop anchor. So we've got like, I don't even know how much line I got in here, probably 50 yards, a lot. It's tied up to an anchor chain in the back. We'll get to that here in a minute. So let me get that back up. Um, this is one of the most important features on the boat and I can see that I need to 
re-sticky his, his foot pad down, but that's Snorlax. So we named these boats after. So this is Snorlax, this is Snorlax. You're gonna see the blue Snorlax here in a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, Pokemon has like shiny Pokemon. We've got like the green one and we've got a blue one. They come in different colors. Uh, but we named it that because it's a giant barge. So I mentioned the drive a little bit, but I did want to point this out. It's a 360 drive, so you can turn any direction. It's absolute cheat codes on any body of water. Handles amazing in the wind. Here's the control for that right on the side. Actually turns a crank inside the boat down there. So the interlocking gears here will turn the fins and you can go any direction you want. It's awesome. All right, so let's get this drive out of here. Got a little compartment container here that I love. It's got a mesh pocket for like my keys and stuff up top. Got our fishing license, GoPro, hat, neck gear, you know, whatever, sunglasses, wires, batteries, all that stuff lives in here. It's a dry hatch with a drop-in bin, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, there are a few companies that make different options for that. I think Burley Pro makes a really cool one that you guys could check out too. And they have like a, a junk bin in the bottom and then it'll fit like a 3,600 size tackle box right on top of that too, which is cool. So love that hatch, hyper useful. Under the seat, we got plastics. Picked up a little $2 bin from local store and uh, yeah, it holds all the plastics you could ever want. So that's our main plastics compartment. These seats are phenomenal. They have like a lumbar support. This area is padded. Uh, you know, of course you could purchase like an additional pad if you want to. I think there's one called like kayak cushions out there a lot of people use. This seat honestly is just ridiculously comfy. It also comes out so you can just take it camping. So I'll often just have my boat when Paul and I go camping. We just sit in our Hobie chairs from time to time. Yeah, I mean, it's a ton of different adjustments on it, tension adjustments on the side so you can lift this seat up. You can bring the back of it up. It's ridiculous. Probably also one of the most expensive parts of the boat. That, that's your price tag right there is basically this and the drive. We got, we got Lauren here. You guys remember from ice fishing? So Lauren is here to help me find fish. She is a fish finder. Got that rigged up to a little ram arm. It's got those ball adjustments. So you can adjust this any angle you want. It's fantastic. Uh, front gear track, this little front gear is for this camera arm from Yak Attack. It's the Panfish Pro. Uh, that also has an insane amount of adjustments that you can do to it. So we can rig that up so it's not in the way when we're casting or landing fish, stuff like that. Give you guys a better camera angle. I promise I'll use that a little bit more often this year so you get some different views. This bin is stupid. This bin is really stupid. This is probably one of the one of my favorite accessories on this boat. So it's an h rail attachment. It holds up to a 3700 size box. Even these Busby's which are oversized tackle boxes and over beefed up. They both fit in here. And then you've got this little tie down strap as well. So if I'm hitting like rougher water and I just don't want this thing to pop out, I could throw those down or when I'm driving, if I want to leave it out there, Paul is notorious for leaving all of his tackle stuff in the boat open back of his truck, barreling down dirt roads at like 70. So I don't do that usually, but if I wanted to, there you go, I could. The ever important cup holder and the Shark Deuce matching Yeti. You gotta get a, a Yeti that matches your boat. I think it's important. Paul doesn't, but who cares what Paul thinks. All right, moving back. Behind the rods back here, you can see these. I've got uh, these amazing little side mounts. They're from Burley Pro. So this boat comes with mesh netting. I think you still have yours on yours. So when we get to Paul's boat, you'll see the mesh netting. But I decided to swap it out for this. I'm kind of a fan of this too. So it's got like a little plier holder here. I can throw my scale in there. I can throw extra plastics. I got another one on that side. That's actually the jig tray. I have another one on the other side that's actually a jig tray. So it's designed to hang hooks and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Love those, use them all the time as well. Right behind me, we've got plenty of room for a little extra plastics. This is like the bulky stuff. So I love clamshell packaging. It keeps your plastics from getting like wacky tails and stuff on like your flukes, but it's bulky. So it doesn't really fit in my normal bin. So I'll bring like a monster bass bag and just pack it full of like the bulky stuff. And usually swim plastics will be in there. I'll use those a lot. Emergency paddle slash assaulting paddle slash line retrieving paddle, <laughs> like whatever you need to do for it. This thing helps me just push off from the shore when I'm getting launched and all that. You guys probably saw me just beating up the ice on my lake with it. So uh, it, it's pretty fantastic. It gets used and it'll get me out of like skinny water situations too if I get stuck. Very, very helpful. Cup holder number two. Now this is surprising to me. I rocked one cup holder for a long time. Like day one, Paul got his boat. He went for two cup holders and I thought he was crazy. 
I'm like, how bougie are you, dude? You need two cup holders? It's a game changer. It is actually, and I'm gonna say that a lot in this boat because this whole boat is a game changer, but uh, it makes a big difference. So I can carry some extra bevies with me and that helps me get through longer days on the water. I think it's really helpful. We got the H crate back here. H crate is, first of all, very expensive, but uh, it is worth it to me. I think it's fantastic. Um, you've got rod keepers back here. Look at this. So you can just crisscross applesauce over your reels. So again, if I'm going through rougher water, I don't have to worry about the river taking another rod RIP to my, my little finesse combo that I lost on the river last year. Um, you've also got H rail attachments. You can see I'm using it for the cup holder here, which is fantastic. We got our bump board back here, attach that with some yak attack attachments. Now with the, the Hobie H crate, unfortunately it doesn't line up perfectly well. So you gotta kind of, you know, jerry rig it a little bit, make that thing work. Uh, we figured it out, but Bump board is nice to have. Also, these don't float, FYI. Be careful. Maybe get a neon one like Paul did. That was smart. We got our net back here. Love this Yak Attack flip out net. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And if I landed Monster Pike, I'm good. Like I can just scoop them out with this thing. And then I usually just keep it in like one of my rod holders back here. That one's called a leverage net. It's by Yak Attack. 100% worth it if you're looking for a good net. A flip out net folding that like that is awesome. On this H crate, I did go for the cover, which I like because you can zip it shut. Uh, it's not like waterproof by any means. It's still gonna let water in through like where the zipper line is, but you can hold a ton of tackle back here. So what do we got? We got five 3,700 size tackle boxes that you can cram into this thing. If you go vertical, you can hold more. I mean, I don't really need more than this. This is like the main stuff. This is already overkill, I know. A lot of you guys would be like, why are you bringing all this stuff? Well, because I like to have my stuff, man. And because I can. <laughs> this right here, I get a lot of people asking me about in comments. This is the Boondocks landing gear. If you get their newer gear, the HD setup, it's solid. You get this nice aluminum rail that goes across the back. It does have a track mount. So you can see on both sides, I've got my trolling set up here. So your rod holders can go in the side, put any accessory that's track mounted, you can throw it in here. And the wheels come down on the side. You can see them on that side there. So they've got like that nice metal arm coming down, super strong. These things will get over any terrain. I, I promise you I've done it. Uh, and the wheels, the way the HD ones are set up is they're not, rubber and filled with air like the old ones were. The old wheels were a lot tougher to get off the water with because they wouldn't submerge in the water as well because they were full of air. So these new plastic wheels are fantastic and they're heavy duty, they hold up. Like I said, I've gone over uh, the rock, the dirt paths, like dragged it through the mud, gotten stuck on stuff. Like they, they hold up really well. And there's a big metal bar that's inside the side of the Hobie. So it's protecting that Hobie. Like I realize I drilled holes in an expensive boat, which voids its warranty. However, that was a risk reward scenario and the risk was not nearly as bad as you would think it was, right? These things are super sturdy. That metal bar in there is gonna prevent you from getting any stress cracks. And then there's actually like these big heavy duty metal elbows on the side too that are holding it all in place. So I think it's well worth it. Uh, yes, it voids your warranty, but it's not gonna break. Like, just hold on to it, it's, it's fine. And you can get these installed on really any kayak that you have. All right, so we already covered the Anchor Wizard. Again, this thing's fantastic. So Anchor Wizard line runs back here. Boondocks do not interfere with that line, that's what I love about it. And then this is just a pulley that you get with like any Anchor trolley setup. So yeah, go ahead and release it, boom. Those are, <laughs> what's up, buddy? <laughs> Number one biggest fan. <laughs> this is what I was talking about with those chains uh, a little while ago. So you don't have to do this. In fact, Paul's just leaving his like chains wide open. They really don't catch on anything, but you could throw like an old tire tube. Just take like a 26 inch tire tube. These have been on here for a long time and they're holding up really well. You just slide it over those chains and then I just zip tied it and you're good. So this thing's awesome. Mainly it, it you know, doesn't get stuck on anything. So I can leave it down in the river, for example. It's a drag anchor is what we call it. Uh, and lets you get over any cover you want. And they clip off really easy. That's why we do chains. So I can adjust the weight on the fly. So I've got a few different lengths of chain that I use. And I know that they're anywhere from like a pound to a pound and a half. So I can just level it up if I want a three pound anchor today, or it's a super windy spring day, which is, Kind of what we're dealing with. So I go five pound anchor, or if I'm on the river, I go heavier anchor, whatever I need just to control the rate of speed at which I'm traveling <laughs> or, or drifting, right? So that thing is fantastic. And we can bring extra chains with us if we're not sure. And then we can adjust on the fly as we go. 
last thing so this is the back of the boat i mean there's other cool stuff about this boat but we can cover it in other videos there's a skeg rudder all that stuff but this right here i think is really important for me to talk about because i want you guys to check this out this is another burley pro so you tell i kind of like this company i've been using a lot of their stuff i think it's really well made it's extremely custom to really any kayak they work with like all the brands uh, but they make a lot of cool stuff that i use on the hobie so this is from burley pro it's called the batarang it allows you in this back hatch to hang a battery down so i can take this unusable space because it's got like my skeg and my rudder that molding there you can't like you can't do a drop-in pouch you can't really put an, a bucket back here which they did make for some of the other hobies it doesn't work in this in the 360 at least um but this allows me to hang up to two batteries. You'll see on Paul's, he has both brackets down, but with one bracket here, I've got a 12 volt, seven amp hour battery that I can hang down. Got my wiring running back here. It's waterproof inside the hall, like no water's really getting in there unless I flip it, which you guys can go back and watch a video if you want to, and uh, you will get wet. <laughs> um, but, but with that one battery, I can power up the fish finder. If I get another battery, which we're debating about doing this year, then we can run like some lights. We can do like a USB charger. We can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, also, there's a bottle opener back here. Cool call out. Good job, Hobie. You do cool things. And that, with the ceiling of this hatch, is the end of my boat all my accessories now here's what we're going to do next we're going to get paul's boat out it's on his kayak cart which we also diy'd and you can see the full diy how to on our channel we're going to take this thing out we're going to mess with it we're actually going to take all this junk fill it up because we got to go fish people You want to hear about my boat so no. this is <laughs> all right this is my boat i'm gonna try and blast through this because it's already like 11 o'clock and i wanted to be fishing two hours ago so jeff already talked about it very similar uh, same boat but very similar rig um just a couple of little nuanced differences so i keep almost the same stuff in the front of my boat i actually keep an extendo uh instead of the assault paddle whatever jeff uses that club for this actually oars which is nice um i keep waterproof gear in mine frog togs this is like a very convenient pouch if you ever get dumped on you'll want this i also keep a bow line i think this one's 12 feet knots on both sides sunblock or else i will die in the vest i keep most of my tools and i keep the little angler deal tell me more about your boat <laughs> you want to hear more about the boat no. so middle area uh, i do use the panfish pro i keep it right up front just like so uh very easy to take on and off which i really like uh I keep my Ford, I keep a rod holder right here. Um, and I use that one when I really only use it in the front when I want to troll. So I most of the, most of the time I leave it in the back. The reason I leave it back over here is because I like this forward facing rod holder to actually, when I'm changing lures, if I'm unhooking a fish, I actually shove it right back here. Then the rod tip is facing that direction, which pretty much puts any of the bait and all the other stuff right in front of you where you want to, where your hands are going to be working. That's probably my biggest tip on this entire rig. Honestly, a forward facing rod holder, like a rod holder facing this direction, that's like by your hip. World of difference, it's like a $20 ad, totally worth doing. Um, what do I keep under the seat? Almost the same thing as Jeff, one huge difference though. So still got big bin of plastics, but I actually keep strapped to the, when it's not in the way of one of my rods, strapped to the seat, I keep this little tiny day bag. Now this day bag has some trolling uh, equipment right back here has fish keeper if I want to keep some fish has a string for that stringer for that I keep uh, extra line on both sides in the main compartment I keep line special plastics that I want to use just for that day like bags of plastic for filming for that day and in the front I keep like bobbers and like worm hooks for when we do live bait fishing I do also I just figured this out 
seven, eight minutes ago. Um, I started using braided scissors because I had some snips that I did not like for cutting braid. Um, these are like seven bucks at Bass Pro. They're fantastic. They also have the split ring um, needle nose hook and I just hung it from my seat. I think I'm really gonna like that a lot. I'm very particular about which rods go on which side. With this boat, the way the rod holders are sort of traditionally set up, which I, I do appreciate and like and use, uh, you want the reel handles all facing the same direction. So I keep my spinning rigs on one side so the reel handles are on the inside, and then I keep my, because I'm a left hand retrieve, and then I keep my bait casters on this side and vice versa. That keeps everything just the way that I want it. Bin, I have a day box for what I'm gonna fish that day. So today it's cold water, jerk baits, and square bills, and then I always keep, that was probably really loud, and I also keep the terminal box right here. Nothing different on the seat. My anchor wizard is on the other side as Jeff's. I like to, like, I use my right hand to operate it, so it's on the right side. I think Jeff's yours is on the left. Oh, and then I do have one uh, for when I do trolling. I like to actually have my, my trolling rod in front of me, so that's why I have this starport mount on the A-trail in front versus in back. Moving on to the back of the boat. Again, very similar to Jess, I keep my uh, trough within access. I'll be honest, until I catch a fish, this stays vertical until I catch a fish and then it stays on the deck for pretty much the rest of the day. So that's pretty much how that's set up. <laughs> I do have a little bit of a different rig for my, uh, for my net. So I have a, a little bit, a, a decent sized net, aluminum handle, does not float. And so I just have mine on a, bungee cord and I leave it in the rod holder that's like built in back here. Um, it's very easy, never had a problem with it. So break it out, blah, blah, blah. The, one of the biggest changes between my old boat and this boat, I wanted the net on my left because I, you know, I'm working the fish with my right hand and then I want my left hand operating the net. So that's why I have the net on this side and the anchor wizard on the opposite side. Beverage, beverage, like Jeff said, it's clutch bag of plastics within reach. I have four boxes here, four 3700s here, and then two 3600s uh, in the back. I used to keep them in the hatch. Now I keep in the hatch, because I just got the drop in bin, keep snacks, GoPro batteries, and a scale, which is something new for me to carry this year, which I've never done. So when you ask me what my PB is, I'll freaking tell you what my PB is this time. Uh, I use the same HD landing gear. My rig is just like Jeff's. I did have to, I found that mine were binding quite a bit um, when I was pulling them in and out. So I actually took a grinder to mine to like make them smaller where I could see that it was grinding on this, you know, where you slide it in. I also got some like machine grease, which is waterproof. World of difference and we'll be doing the same thing for Jeff's boat too. That's a baby? So uh, like we said, uh, pretty much everything is the same as Jeff's. I do use oh, the same rig as Jeff for battery. The big difference is I have a second plate here. So as you can see, the battery is mounted to this plate uh, and I have another plate ready to mount another battery. Uh, and I do, that's one of the things that I, one of the big changes I do wanna do to the boat this year is I wanna do some deck lighting. And I really would like to rig it so that when I'm using the camera in the front, the GoPro in, the, in that, Panfish Pro in the front. I'd like to actually have a USB plug-in so I can just waterproof, plug that sucker and have full time running off this battery. I do have the same rig as Jeff. Uh, you have the same rig as me, I feel like, is what Ooh. I should be saying. <laughs> so I use the chains as well. I typically keep three chains on. Four, four chains is actually the setup I use when I wanna use it as an actual anchor. Um, I don't clip on a different anchor. I have found that large anchors do not do well with a rig like this. Um, anything above three pounds and you start to get into some serious problems with standard rigs. Four chains I even have problems with if there's some debris around. So I like typically three that's around you know, two and a half, three and a half pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, I will also make one huge recommendation. If you're gonna do that rig with the chains, you need to get galvanized chains, period. Like period. Two, you, don't, you want them to be at least a foot long. So if they're less than a foot long, they're not really gonna do the job that you want them to do as far as like dragging, um, because the longer the chain, you're getting all that mass spread out on the bottom of the river. Uh, and then my second thing is make sure that you get a hook. Make sure you get a hook that can handle all your chains. So I actually bought a hook that has like a flat bottom here. Carabiner. Carabiner, hook, whatever you wanna call it. Yeah. It's a carabiner. So this is called a carabiner according to Jeff. <laughs> When you get a carabiner, make sure you get one that can accommodate as many chains as you think you're going to use. I knew that three to four was going to be my max, so when I went to the store, I held up the chains, and this like triangle-shaped carabiner actually was a 
solid pickup. Make sure you get stainless steel. Again, this is gonna get wet, it's gonna live in the water. You don't want something that's gonna rust on you or cause a problem for the water creatures. So, blew through that. Can we can we go fishing? Are you done? Can we go fishing? No. I'm ready to fish for the fishies with this thing. All right, you guys, Paul's wrapping things up right now. We're getting his boat prepped. We're gonna go hit the water. Hey, hopefully this video was helpful for you. I know a lot of you guys are looking for a vessel, a fishing vessel, if you will, to get on the water with, to go get after some fishies. Bank fishing's amazing, it's a lot of fun. We're to do that more wading's a lot of fun kayak fishing for us is the goat it is the goat we love doing it so so much so hopefully this was enlightening informative and enjoyable maybe educational entertaining edutaining that's what we go for on this channel if it was be sure to subscribe to the channel smash that like on this video ring that notification bell so you can see when we drop more content there'll be more yak content coming your way this year probably upgrade our rigs at some point too so there's tons of videos i got old videos you can watch too they'll all be linked in this video so go check them out and we're gonna go fish so that'll also be a video <gasps> stick around and then maybe come hang out with us every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We go live. It's a fun live podcast we do on the channel and we'd love to see you there. Talk to you in chat. Anything else, my friend? Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a good day. We'll see you later.